Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folari. I suppose we can be saying um, happy Eid al-Fitri. The federal government this morning just announced uh, an extension, a one-day extension right up until Thursday uh, for the Eid al-Fitri uh, celebrations. Uh, before then, uh, it had been thought to be just, um, what, today and um, day after tomorrow, uh, day, today and tomorrow, uh, that is Tuesday, Wednesday, but government has added uh, Thursday, so it's in the news, you've heard it already. But uh, today, uh, I guess one of the um, largest political happenings uh, is in Edo State, where there's been a change in the uh, executive lineup there. Talking about the uh, deputy governor, uh, Mr. Philip Shaibu, uh, he's been, he has been replaced now by uh, a gentleman called Omobayo Marvelous. We'll find out all about him, but just before, and let me just tell you, let me introduce our guest. He is Honorable Andrew, Andrew Nwata, and uh, he's a constitutional lawyer, and he's also the immediate past commissioner for information in Edo State. A fine morning to you, uh, Honorable Nwata. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here this morning, and good morning to Nigerians, and happy Eid for three to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Indeed, thank you. Okay, so, but just before we get into it, we'll just give you a background report that went out earlier on TVC. Here it is. The Edo State House of Assembly in its impeachment process adopted report of the seven-man investigative panel set up by the state chief judge, Justice Daniel Okungbowa to probe allegations of misconduct against Mr. Shaibu. The assembly of 20 members voted 18 against 1, with the speaker expected to give the deciding vote in case of a tie. By head counsel, not just voting, and the endorsements of the impeachment document the second time, Governor Godwin Obasaki announced his choice of Mr. Omobayo as his deputy hours after the impeachment of Philip Schreiber. He was sworn in by Justice Okungboa. There is already a plan, master plan. So as an engineer and as a politician, I will try to assist the government to finish well. This decision is therefore taken to promote inclusiveness, equity and fairness in the governance of Edo State. He is well suited for the role as a professional and an expert in public administration. But the now former deputy governor of Edo State, Philip Schwaibu, has described his impeachment as an attack on democratic principle, insisting all the allegations against him are trumped-up charges. I denounce in strongest terms the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over trumped-up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It is a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Let it be clear that this impeachment was harshed because of my ambition to contest the Edo State 2024 governorship election under the People Democratic Party, PDP an ambition that is a legal right to all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The report by the seven-man judicial panel of inquiry recommended that a deputy governor be impeached on grounds of disclosure of government secrets. The Edo House of Assembly had last week commenced plans to impeach Mr. Shaibu, with 20 of the 24 lawmakers signing the petition. Okay, so uh, there you have it. That's a quick background uh, to the story. So uh, it's out for, you know, the former uh, deputy governor, Philip uh, Shaibu, and it's in with the new deputy governor, Omobayo Marvelous Godwins. Okay, let me come to our guest uh, now, Honorable Andrew M. Wata. 
quite um, uh, turbulent uh, political activity in the state, or not necessarily so? What would be your assessment? Uh, move transition, how would you categorize it? Yeah, thank you. I will quickly start by first say that what we have in Edo State is a complete case of anarchy, lawlessness. And I must quickly say that it was the governor's uncle, retired and late Justice Andrews Ututu Obaseke of blessed memory, who once said, and I quote him, I think it was in a particular case, Ojuku versus the governor of Lagos State, where he said that executive lawlessness is tantamount to a deliberate violation of the Constitution. I will start with the last. The governor said he swore in a new deputy governor. Section 191 sub 3 C says, for a vacuum in the event of a casual vacancy of the office of governor, for that vacuum to be filled, the appointment to be made or the nomination to be made by the governor must be with the approval of the State House of Assembly. We were in court yesterday because I'm one of the counsel for the deputy governor. The court had given an order. They, obey, they failed to obey that order. They went ahead with the impeachment. The chief judge is a party in that case, the House of Assembly, and four of the members of the panel, the Kangaroo panel, the chief judge set up. Unfortunately, the matter was in court. The lawyers who Obaseki sent, he sent five senior advocates, including Oluwale Yamu, the immediate past attorney general of Edo State. But yet, two hours after the courts had told us to come back on Thursday, they went ahead to impeach Shaibo in a very illegal fashion. While that impeachment was on, people were already seated in the government house festival hall. Immediately, the Shaibu's uh, impeachment was announced. Within one hour, the governor quickly swore in a replacement without the approval of the House of Assembly. The young man he appointed did not even appear before the House of Assembly for the House of Assembly to give his approval. So that another illegality has taken place. So if we talk of executive lawlessness, the governor of Edo State has decided to subvert the provisions of our constitution, has desecrated the very tenets of democracy that he swore to uphold as governor of Edo State. If not that we have a rubber stamp House of Assembly, this would have been a very clear ground for the governor of Edo State to be impeached. And that's why we want to use this opportunity to ask Mr. President to look at what is happening in Edo State. This was the same governor that prevented 14 elected House of Assembly members from taking up their seats. I feel sad because if we say we have a political monster, we created him in 2020. We were the ones that projected Obasaki. Shaibu stood with him even against his leader, Adam Zushumole. But as they say, Kama is a friend of all. Shaibu has had his own fair taste. Obasaki has a four-year term. His term of office will end on the 11th of November this year. So where does that take him to? The violations oh. of the constitution he has done? Over one billion of adult taxpayers' money have been spent since last year just to remove one man from office. In an illegal fashion, he evicted his deputy governor from government house last year. He stopped all his allowances for the past eight months. That office has not been funded. The, the government house chapter where the deputy governor worships the governor throughout the catechist, told them to leave the place and locked the place just to prevent tribal from attending chapel services against his constitutional right to freedom of worship. So for okay. us, what we have is a complete case of dictatorship of the highest order. And until Mr. President and the Nigerian judiciary intervenes, the lawlessness will continue unabated in our states. And those okay. is always in the news for the bad reason. Why will the House of Assembly spend so much of its time on a matter not as important as state affairs, but impeachment of a deputy governor? And you see the speaker, he was counting words. Because if you are doing something that is right, you'll be confident. And as they say, there's no proper way to do the wrong thing. So why the haste? Why the haste? The matter is in court. So we, what we, we are experiencing here, though, is not democracy. It's autocracy of the highest okay. order. And until okay. the government of Edo State is caught to order, we don't need to wait till November 11th before it leaves. All the sins Wait. he has committed against the Nigerian constitution, against the other people, he must account for it because we have a constitutional democracy. Okay. You cannot remove a deputy governor illegally and appoint Honorable. another person illegally under our constitution and nobody is doing anything. Honorable that is Andrew. a civilian coup d'etat that took Honorable. place and not the Honorable. removal of the deputy Honorable. governor according to the express provisions of Section 188. Get to those details, but 
we have the time for a conversation. And you have made it very, very clear from the get-go that, I mean, the side that you are on. You said that you, you know, you know you're a constitutional lawyer yourself, uh, so we, we just got a bit of that. And um, we, we'll, we'll get to the details. But what we have on the one hand now is that um, as far as the governor is concerned, um, there has been a replacement. We'll come back to some of the points you made that the whole thing is, if I, if I understand you properly, the whole process was unknown to law and that it was illegal. Um, the ousted um, deputy governor said as much himself. But let, let, because you're a player in uh, Edo State, uh, what can you tell me about the uh, new deputy governor, Omobayo Marvelous Godwins? Um, much has been made of the fact that he's a young man, but um, he's an engineer. It, maybe it's just in, in Nigeria terms that he's a young man, but um, that, that has been said. What can you tell us about the governor, deputy governor that has been appointed uh, by um, His Excellency uh, Governor Obaseki, even as you say he wasn't approved by the State House of Assembly? What, what can you share with us about the gentleman concerned? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, I hardly know him, but I know he was, um, it was even yesterday, they brought it to our attention that um, it was a Labour Party candidate in the last uh, general elections for House of Reps in his own federal constituency at Kokwedo. Before that time, we heard that the governor was uh, projecting an old PDP member in a group called Legacy. His name is uh, Honorable Pascal Ogbome. He used to be, I think, um, the chief whip of the Edo State House of Assembly. I think that was the name we heard that he wanted to use that man to replace uh, Philip Shaibo to compensate the old PDP members. And uh, in a sudden twist, he now brought in a, a Labour Party member to replace uh, the vacuum he created illegally. And the truth of the matter is this. The governor has always played Labour Party. In the build-up to the 2023 election, on the salary uh, day we had, I think, before the elections, the governor offered me a Labour Party ticket in my local government to go to the House of Assembly. And I rejected it because I knew that was uh, a great gift. You know, they wanted me to vacate my position as commissioner for information at some points. When, you know, they noticed that uh, it was not yielding results, they moved me to youth. And when the governor was offering me the seat in the House of Assembly, I said, ah, you came through your chief of staff. How come you didn't discuss this with me? I became very suspicious. And I rejected it because mm. it was not, it did not make sense. You are a PDP governor. You are offering me Labour Party tickets. When I rejected, they now offered it to another person. The person who they gave that ticket to fill this form in the chief of staff office. We have witnesses that were there. So for us, no. we think the governor wants to work with Labour Party. In 2023 elections, he was fully with Labour Party. That was why PDP could not win any election during the presidential election. The three seats, the three seats they occupied, the PDP lost them. The House of Rep seats, if not that they moved the one for, uh, for Igwebe, Eastern Central, and... Uh, East and West, PDP would have also lost that election. So they lost all the seats at first ballot. It was because they moved one, they now rigged the other one that brought in the former speaker into the House of Reps. So what we have is a situation where the governor has imposed the Labour Party person to occupy a vacuum he created. That ticket was a joint ticket in 2020. Those people elected a governor and a deputy governor on the PDP platform. So, but the governor has now changed, altered it by bringing the Labour Party person. And it's sad to hear the governor. I overheard him in that uh, inauguration. But, but, but he wasn't uh, appointed as a Labour Party. Speech of the I'm new acting sorry. governor. The, I'm sorry I'm to coming. be interjecting. I'm coming, uh, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't appointed uh, from a Labour base, was he? He had sort of transformed into a PDP member, right? He was a PDP member. No, I'm not aware right. of that. that. It's not true. It's not true. I'm not aware of that. They are just trying to make that up. Just to anchor my point, I said I overheard the governor in that inaugural, uh, uh, in, the, in, in his inaugural speech, the speech he made when the new uh, deputy governor was uh, appointed, the event they had at the um, government house uh, festival hall. He was trying to say that, uh, oh, he did the appointment, you know, in the interest of fairness, in the interest of equity. Those are lies. It's what the psychologists would call cognitive dissonance. You are doing the wrong thing, you are saying another thing, or you are saying one thing, but you actually mean another. And it reminds okay. us of that uh, character in that British sitcom, some mothers do have them, Frank Spencer. That was an <laughs> exact reflection of what the governor was doing. He was trying to fool Nigerians when he was talking about equity. You remove a okay. deputy governor illegally, 
you appoint another one illegally and you're talking of equity and fairness. I think well, the Nigerian people should be the judge. They should see but, that democracy a, has been no lawyer, As a lawyer, in a as a lawyer, as a lawyer, we, is it not the fact that we have in place in Edo State a mobile marvelous Godwins as the deputy governor? Is that not a fact, legal and practical? It is illegal, and I think it is the court that will make a pronouncement on that. Section you, 191, sub 3, you intend to paragraph pursue this C, talks attack. about approval by the House of Assembly. No approval was given by the House of Assembly. But the governor was in a hurry to violate the Constitution, swore him in. Even I, as a commissioner, before I assumed duty as a commissioner of Edo State, I went through the screening of the House of Assembly. So let me because understand. the governor knows that members of his party are not comfortable, that was why he did it very hurriedly. Honorable Andrew, so let me understand it. Um, uh, Mr. Obaz um, I mean, uh, Mr. Shaibu's camp intends to pursue this matter to the courts. No, he's already in court. You heard me. I said the matter was in court. The court okay. even made an order that all the parties should show cause. Gave an order okay. which, they, which they violated. They didn't obey the order. So this is still being contested as we speak. Okay. Uh, now, yes, this it's is in court. Still... It's in court. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Let me bring on our first caller. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Mr. George. Can you hear us? Good morning, Uncle Yari. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, okay. Good morning and good morning to the guest. Yes. Uncle Yori, I saw this coming. Because if you look at what led to it, go to the governor and uh, Philip Shaibu. Uh, 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 in my own words, are betrayers. So the person that brought them into, into the uh, political spin. And for such people, they will surely do it to each other. It was just a question of time. That's what you are saying. You know, the other day, I was very unhappy with the APC uh, people that were appearing on your station that we are not coordinated in order because it's an opportunity to take power from this governor. I, I was born in that state. So I'm a, a stakeholder there. The governor doesn't have performance to show in the first place. For his eight years, he doesn't have any legacy project to show the people that this is what has been done. Even his own car was being stuck inside flood in the city because of bad roads. In the Benin city, not to talk about the roads to other, other, other towns and other uh, uh, districts. So he doesn't have anything to show about governance. Now, instead of the APC to team up and, uh, and uh, see how they can take power from him, they were, but I'm happy that they are now cooperating. What is happening is just according to the laws of nature. What you sow is what you, you read, read, whether you like it or yeah. not. So yeah. governors have to go on. Let's talk about the coming elections in those states. And not this one that is already. What, what, look at the Trump talk charges. Even the legislature and, and the members of the House, they've forgotten that 14 of them were not even allowed to perform by this same governor. He preferred to use only nine that are loyal to him. And you are asking, that type of governor is asking you to impeach somebody with Trump talk charges. No charge. All right. Let, let them, they I, have I, no charge. I, I hear that. Well, thank you very much for calling in, uh, uh, Mr. George. Uh, well, as we've heard from uh, Honorable Andrew Mwata, uh, constitutional lawyer and former commissioner for information in Edo State, the matter as we, is in court as we speak. In any case, the administration of um, Governor Bazeki is up until uh, November. And I heard his acceptance speech. That is the uh, new deputy governor. And he was saying that um, his, his job was, you know, well cut out for him. He just had to make sure that, um, to help the governor make sure that they sort of set everything in order, maybe in readiness for handing over to the uh, next administration. Um, but the lines are open. Uh, we would like to hear what the people are thinking. Uh, clearly, our guest, uh, Mr. Mwata, uh, and, in, uh, and indeed for that matter, the last caller, is they're not on the side of the governor on this particular uh, exercise. But let's hear it from Chidi in Kafanchan. Good morning, Chidi. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling. Good morning, the Honorable with you in the house. Yes. 
as a matter of fact, the impeachment of the former governor, as it were, former deputy governor of a state, is quite unconstitutional. Though I am not a legal practitioner, and I don't want to preempt the cost of the rule of law, but I want to believe that at the end of the day, the impeached deputy governor stands a very, very good chance to reclaim whatever is his, at least to clear the mess that the governor, current governor, governor Basic, is trying to impone on him. It is very, very sad. So it is time the Nigeria Judicial Commission, the executive arm of the government, and every other stakeholder should come and talk. Because if it is tribal uh, uh, today, nobody knows who is going to be the next tomorrow if this kind of impunity should continue. All I want right, to then. believe that something legally possible should be done to mitigate this democratic um, arrogance. All right. Thank you very much, and God bless Nigeria. Thank you uh, very much for calling in on the matter. So um, here we have it. The matter is in court. Uh, as you pointed out, uh, Honorable Andrew, as you pointed out, the... Uh, the, 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 the Deputy Governor, as we have it now, um, was not cleared by the um, State House of Assembly, an exercise that, you know, quite frankly, a lot of people, you don't have to be too legally minded to, to, know, to, to have noted that. Um, so, uh, and um, Shaibu himself had said that his main quote-unquote offense here was his ambition to become governor, that that was the cardinal sin that is being actioned. Well, uh, it's, it's difficult to go into those matters. We will just take them at the face value as they are. And um, since you said the matter is in court, we'll see how it goes. But already people are calling in and saying that, well, um, they don't quite understand the um, uh, legality or otherwise. But that's probably not for people like us to, to, to comment on. Uh, I'm talking about myself, not your good self. I'm talking about myself. Um, because you need uh, some legal equipment to be able to understand it even before it arrives at the court. Um, Honorable Yakub is on the line. He's been away for quite a while. Uh, good morning to you. <laughs> good morning <laughs> and happy Eid al Fitri. Uh, this morning. Yeah, I need Yakub from Dokwemu. Uh, uh, and then I greet your guest. And then uh, we do respect your guest. I am very sure that even though he has mentioned it earlier that there is a law of karma, I totally agree with him. Then I agree with uh, Mr. George. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much. I totally agree with Mr. George. You see, when, they, when two people ganging up against one person, and then every one of us knew that... Hello, every one of us knew that, yeah, every one of us knew that uh, Obaseki is not a politician. If you're really, I stand to be corrected. If not, help of uh, Philip Schweibers at that time, I don't think Obaseki will win that election. I don't think he will have the lever to even move from APC at that time to PDP. Obaseki, uh, uh, Philip Schweib would do all the dirty job for him as at that time. In fact, he comes to a stage where uh, nobody even talks about the governor as at that time. We always seen uh, uh, Philip Schweib everywhere, social media, television houses, beginning to abuse the power that being. I, I, I don't know about dirty job, time, but maybe a difficult of, uh, assignment. No, I don't know about really, any dirty job, uh, Mr. Yakub. Are you listening to me, sir? I'm not surprised that this thing has happened. But I believe the people that are supposed to amend the Constitution, they were the National Assembly, that will make sure that there is a provision for, for, for the deputy governor, so that nobody, no governor that will come to place and begin to impeach a deputy governor like say, no, no, that, like, like say he was never, the office was never existed. Because if the National Assembly, they are not in that law, as, as case may be, 
This very spectacular shenanigan will be continued. I've never seen a government that is also crazy like Obaseka. I stand to be corrected. This is a democracy. We are not citizens of this country. We have ability and the right of to our opinion because we are not in the military. I'm free to say whatever I want to say. In as much as I'm not alleging wrongly because I believe Obaseki, it is an also crazy person. As Mr. George Rackley said earlier, all right, governor, a governor of a state in this country. She wrote down to a, a nine member of next House of Assembly. He, he does not allow the remaining people to become a, a, to be representing their people, and then he succeeded in doing that. And then nobody say anything, nobody do anything. This is, this is so bad. Thank and God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yakub, for calling in. Um, Honorable Andrew, um, what what can you say about the Edo State Chief Judge Justice Daniel Okumbua? Um, who set up this investigative uh, panel. Uh, Shaibu tried his best to prevent it being set up, but the chief judge had his way. Um, what, what, can you, what, what, can you, what can you say about that, uh, both as a, as a lawyer and a stakeholder in this? I think it's, it's quite unfortunate that uh, Edo State at this time have a man called a chief judge because the Constitution has defined that office as one that uh, is meant for people of integrity, people who should not allow politics to influence their official conduct. And that is why, if you look at our Constitution in our schedules, they attached an oath of office, a judicial oath of office. And I can boldly say here that the Chief Judge of Edo State, Daniel Okumbawa, has violated clear provisions of the Constitution, particularly the oath of office he took, not to allow his personal interest to affect his official conduct. This is a chief judge that knows what Section 191, sub 3C say about in the event that there's a vacancy of the office of deputy governor, the fact that the House of Assembly of the states will approve the appointment. He was the one that hardly took that panel report to the speaker in the morning, yesterday, and he was waiting in government house to swear in the new deputy governor, even when the House of Assembly did not approve the selection and nomination of the person the governor swore in as deputy governor. So the deputy governor uh, uh, appointed by the governor was done so illegally and consecrated by the chief judge of Edo State. He was part so, of that illegality. Happy. You're not happy with the judiciary either uh, in this case. Okay, I'll tell you what. I must take another caller. I beg your pardon, Honorable, Honorable Andrews. So forgive me. I must take another caller. Elder David has called in. Good morning to you, sir. Good, good morning, sir. Yori. Thank you for calling in. Elder, Elder David from Ali Masho, sir. Elder David from Ali Masho, you're very welcome, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me well? Yes, we can hear you very well. Please go ahead, Thank sir. Thank you very much. I have no sympathy for both Obaseki and Shuaibu. They have offended their mentors. And the two of them, you are saying, by this time, yeah, by this time in November, two of them will be a guest of the FCC by the grace of God. <laughs> They have been sued at those states and betrayed their mentor. May God bless us, Shimone. They were hand-picked. Yes. You know about that he was in, in, Gango, in Gangote as a legal advisor. They were hand-picked as chief of staff to the detriment of the people in Edo. This is a man that came in and tried to insert the politician. It was the same man uh, that is uh, our own highly respected comrade that had picked him to, uh, to House of Prep. He was the real politician. And when this man was misbehaving, instead of him to resign, he joined him and they left the PC to PVP. And what they did, they misled those states and ruined that place. A regional headquarters. They are the world governor that ever ruled those states. Mm. They have seen against God and humanity. Mm. The good people of Edo State will never forgive them. They are already out. 
They are destroyed PDP in Edo State. Do I know PDP? Nationwide, they are no more existing. Okay. Uh, all right, Edward. Elder David. They betray him. Uh, uh, Elder David, okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much for calling in to contribute to this. Uh, but as of this very minute, uh, yesterday, uh, His Excellency the Governor of Baseki did swear in uh, Omar Bayo Marvelous Godwins as his uh, deputy. And both of them are to steer the ship of state until uh, November this year uh, when a constitutional change shall be made. But our guest has told us that this is a matter that the courts are expected to come in on, to adjudicate on. And he has expressed his total dissatisfaction with everything that has gone on so far. So has um, uh, the man himself, the, uh, the now uh, removed uh, deputy uh, governor um, in the person of um, Philip Shaibu. Well, I, I think we should just take a break. We'll take a break now, come back, and continue this conversation with um, Honorable uh, Andrew M. Wanta, constitutional lawyer and former commissioner for information in Edo State. Stay with us, please. <laughs> 